Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is a Minis Forums UM690. This little tiny PC packs an 8 core 16 thread AMD Ryzen 9 6900 HX processor. That means that this has both a pretty darn fast processor, but we also get things like DDR5 for more memory bandwidth, as well as a new upgraded GPU in this generation with the RDNA 2 graphics. Now, if you look online, you might think that this is the most amazing thing in the world. I thought the same thing because after we did the B-Link GTR6, we had a lot of comments saying, hey, you should be looking at the Minis Forums one. And so we went out and purchased one. And so this is one that is definitely funded by the STH YouTube members. If you'd like to support our projects, like doing independent reviews of these, feel free to join below. I'd really appreciate it if you can. So the game plan for today, we're gonna go over the hardware. We're gonna talk about performance, power consumption, noise, and the things that we learned about this system versus the other ones in the market. With that, let's get to the hardware overview. Now you've probably noticed that there are two boxes over here. One you might recognize, the other one you might not recognize. So the first thing I wanna just say is that, uh, you know, a lot of folks will look at this form factor online and automatically think, oh, like that's the size of an Intel Nook, isn't it? And this is a 12th gen Intel Nook, which is gonna use their new gen, I think this is their new like 13th gen design or whatever. And what you'll see is that this is actually quite a bit bigger. I don't know if you guys can see that on camera, hopefully you can, but it's actually quite a bit bigger uh, in, in every dimension than an Intel Nook. So it is a similar kind Kind of looking form factor, but it is definitely larger and significantly larger than the Intel Nook. The other one is that a lot of folks said this is way smaller than the B-Link, and I assumed like, oh yeah, of course it is uh, a lot smaller. But when you actually stack them up together, uh, a couple things that you're gonna notice here that are a little different. First off, the overhang, this actually overhangs the B-Link by a little bit, so the B-Link is a little shorter depth. It is definitely longer, so you can see that. But the uh, but the Minis form is actually a little bit taller. So the Minis form is smaller, but it's not by as much of a margin as I think a lot of folks on the internet have mentioned. One really nice feature though is that Minis Forms actually gives you this little stand. And so you can run this thing in either a horizontal position, kind of like we have the Nook or the GTR6 here, or you can also run it in a vertical position like this. We did notice some cooling things that we're gonna talk about, especially when we talk about game testing and stuff. But I, I do wanna just point out that you could definitely run it like this. And I think it's a very valid way to go do it. So I do like the fact that you get a little stand. I don't love the little stand, but it's nice that you have one. But let's face it, the reason you're here is not because of a stand. The reason you're here is because this has an AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX processor, eight core 16 threads, the brand new RDNA 2 graphics. So you have the Radeon 6, 80M, which, you know, some folks might confuse that for like a discrete GPU, but it's actually just an integrated GPU into this, but this generation is much, much faster. We also get the benefit of having things like DDR5 that we're gonna see later, but all those things combined mean that we have a really nice processor as well as a pretty decent integrated GPU that you can actually do things on now that you couldn't do before. You can actually play a lot of games on this, um, which we're gonna show you later, and I was pretty surprised with the performance. But with that, let's get to the ports and stuff because everybody loves ports on these things. First thing I just also want to point out is the fact that I picked this up and I realized this thing is like completely plastic. The GTR6, the tops inside stuff are, are definitely a little bit plastic, but then the sides are metal, right? So, I mean, that's something that's a little different metal construction versus plastic construction, but it also means that this is lighter if you care about that, I guess. Now on the port side, you get a power button. You also get a recessed reset switch, which I really, really like. Uh, I don't like the green clear CMOS button on the B-Link, so that's actually something I see as a good thing for Minis Forum. You also get a combo headset jack, and then you get two USB Type-C ports. Now, one of these ports is actually a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, so it's a 10 gigabit per second port. The other one is way more interesting because that is the USB 4 port. That USB 4 port may just sound like a USB port, but it is super important in the system because it is actually the highest resolution display output that you can get. You can get up to 8K 60 frames per second on the USB port. However, the HDMI ports are definitely not that fast. However, if you wanna do other things, because this is USB 4, you could do things like add an eGPU, you can have high speed, whatever you want, and you can connect it to the USB-C here. I really like the fact that this has it, and that is my number one feature that I wish the B-Link unit had, but it, it just doesn't. Okay, and moving around the system, I do wanna point out just real quick that, uh, you know, the top of of this unit and the bottom of the unit are completely solid, but you do have vents like on every single side of this unit other than the top and bottom. Now on the back of the unit, our USB theme continues with four USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Again, 
for 10 gigabit per second ports. I do like the fact that you get the 10 gigabit per second ports, but I will also note that we do have some things like, for example, our tiny pilot KVM that we use to do a lot of the screen capture and set these things up initially. Um, it actually does not work on these 10 gigabit per second ports, but it works on the USB 2 ports of the B link. So it's just one of those things that, you know, people are like, why do you still have USB 2? And it's really a compatibility thing. And it's something that we definitely saw just setting these units up. We also get a two and a half gigabit ethernet LAN port, as well as two HDMI outputs. Now these HDMI outputs are only 4K 60 outputs. So these are not really like, you know, high-end outputs. And they're certainly lower than the four HDMI outputs that we had on the B-Link. So it's just designed for maybe a lower end display setup than the B-Link is. Okay, now rounding out the features of the system, we have a 19 volt power input on the back. We also have a little tiny microphone thing that I didn't even see the first time we did it. The microphone is not great and the microphone has to contend with crazy fan noise. For example, let's say you wanted to use this while gaming. Uh, well, here's just what it sounded like on the OBS capture when we were doing our gaming. The other thing that the B-Link has that this doesn't have is it doesn't have a fingerprint reader. Okay, now getting inside the system is uh, really rough and it's way harder than it needs to be. They need to fix this. So the way that you get into it is that you have to undo some screws, but to undo the screws, you have to like pry off the little uh, rubber pads and then stick them somewhere, hoping not to lose them because that would be terrible. And once you've done that, you actually are exposing the screws that let you get in there. And I just don't like this, right? I know most people are not gonna actually go and do upgrades or anything like that, but you can see that it takes a little bit of time. And the other thing you have to worry about is just like these big giant rubber feet, like losing adhesion. And so what Minis Form actually did, and I have, I have the two right here, they actually give you two extra ones that you can throw on here, I guess, if those become uh, not sticky anymore or something like that. But it's just silly. Why even do that? Why not just go make little holes in them? The B-Link guys, that's 100% what they did. So I don't understand why the Minis Forms guys didn't do this. Okay, and then once you've unscrewed everything, then you kind of have to like pry this thing off. And once you've done that, now you're inside the system. So I guess that's a big win. And one of the features that you do have here, that I'm just gonna point out real quick, is that on the bottom of this lid, you can put a two and a half inch drive. I don't know if I would recommend that just because I think the bottom of the system is already getting really hot. And so I guess this is a feature that you could do, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend if you don't have to. Okay, now that we're inside the system, let's go look around and you're gonna see that we have two DDR5 SOD DIM slots. That's something that's good because we need more memory bandwidth for things like that iGPU and the faster processor. On the other hand, it does cost more than DDR4. Now we actually got this unit configured with two 16 gig DIMMs for 32 gigs total. And then we also have a half terabyte SSD. We really just wanted to have the same configuration that we had in the minis forum. And that's the reason for that. Now on the other side of the chassis, we have like a SSD that has a little heat sinky type thing that has like these little, uh, like rubber bands or something like that around them. And underneath that, we have our MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E chipset, which is the AMD chipset as well. I mentioned earlier that you can put a two and a half inch drive here. And the port for that is right here. This thing is the HDD connector. And you take that little supplied cable and that gives you your power and data connection to a two and a half inch drive. Although I don't think many people should be using this. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX. In general, it is darn good, and it's definitely a lot faster than many of the other solutions that we've seen. But I will say that comparing the Minis Forum to the B-Link, we saw something really interesting in terms of the performance. And I'm going to show you two Geekbench 6 results to really show you the difference that we saw. So you're gonna see on these two runs in Geekbench that the B-Link GTR6 is a little bit faster in the single thread, which is a little bit surprising just given the fact that the Minis Forum will actually run at a higher power level for a bit of time. On the flip side, the multi-core difference was 7% or so. And when you look at the overall, like, you know, just kind of all the results that we had, I think they were all within, you know, five to 8%. So this 7% seems like it's pretty, pretty decent, especially if you have anything that's longer, so it's not able to just turbo through the entire thing. Okay, now one of the areas that as we've been doing these mini PC reviews, a lot of folks have asked for, but we didn't do it at least in the beginning, is asked for gaming. And we don't really do gaming, but we have settled on for these mini PCs, we're just gonna run League of Legends and see how it works. We're gonna run in two different game modes. 
first we're gonna run in 4K and then we're gonna run in 1080. So let's get going. Okay, so the 4K, this is absolutely horrible gameplay. Uh, you know, we're probably in the top end, probably in that 50 to 60 FPS range, but we're getting a lot of dips down into like the 20s. And frankly, this is not an enjoyable experience. I dislike this. We do have all the settings set to very high graphics, but this is uh, this is atrocious, guys. This is just not something that uh, is enjoyable at all. So let's switch over to 1080. Okay, and 1080, we're getting somewhere in that like 80 to 60 uh, FPS range. And this actually is very playable. I think this is not too bad. Everything's on, on very high settings. So I, I think this is definitely doable. I guess the thing that we've learned with the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX is that it can actually like game decently well, especially on these kind of like esports titles. This is not too bad. The one thing I do wish is that we could run 4K. And of course, because we did test this before getting on camera, we did actually figure out what's going on here. And it's actually the RAM that's throttling. And so we've tried it both in this vertical and also the horizontal position, right? And either way, we tend to get throttling very quickly, actually on the DDR5 memory. There's no airflow down there. There's no fan, anything like that. That's something on the B link unit we've seen to cool both the memory as well as the NVMe SSD. And I think that this is a difference here that's definitely hurting it because I think that's what's really throttling our performance. Okay, so let's get to the power consumption and noise. So the first thing I just wanna point out is uh, right here, this is the 120 watt adapter that came with our UM690. So we're gonna plug this in. We have a microphone that's right here, so it's not too, too far. And then we also have a decibel meter over here. We're gonna turn it on. We get a nice little, uh, we get a nice little blue light. It powers up just really briefly or just makes fan noise really briefly. Honestly, it's super quiet right now. Okay, we are now idle on the Windows 11 Pro desktop. And if you go look over here, you're gonna see that we're probably in that about 6.8 to about eight watt range at idle. It does bounce around a little bit, but that's kind of like your kind of bottom end for power consumption. And let's go get a workload running on just the CPU. We're not gonna be doing a GPU here. And the studio has a noise floor of about 34 dBA on this little meter. So that just kind of gives you some relative idea of, of how loud it is in here. Okay, now this thing is definitely running. Uh, we got some workloads running on here. We're at about 64, call it 65 watts in total power consumption. I'll let you have a little listen. And we're hitting about 38 dBA on this. Okay, so we have a seven to eight watt range idle, and then we go up to about 65, 66 watts on the top end. And that's a, not too bad actually for a platform like this. And the noise is frankly a lot better than I thought it would be. The difference, however, is that we haven't really been stressing the DDR5 memory when we did that by actually playing a game on it. That is where we definitely saw this system struggle because of the DDR5 temperatures. Okay, with all these mini PC reviews, I love to have a key lessons learned. And I think for this unit, um, there were definitely a couple things that we learned. Uh, number one, you know, the fact is that I thought that this was the same size as an Intel Nook, but it actually is quite a bit bigger and noticeably bigger, even though they look like they're similar form factors. The other thing that I noticed was that the materials that are used in this, frankly, aren't, um, you know, they're just not as good as I would have liked. I would like to have a metal chassis. I get the plastic is cheaper, but at the end of the day, you know, the fact that B-Link has a metal chassis just makes that feel like in your hand and stuff. It feels like that is the more premium one versus this. Some people just don't care. I totally get that. But it just permeates through the entire chassis down to things like not having the screw holes that are easily accessible on the bottom. So it makes it a lot more difficult to service this one versus the B-Link. And even things like just the cooling. I mean, clearly you need cooling on the DDR5 SO dims and the NVMe SSD. And I just, to me, that seems like a really poor design. And that's why I think in our League of Legends test on the B-Link, it was like not great playable at 4K, but it was like kind of okay. Versus this thing is just not playable. Like that was a horrible, horrible experience. And I had to like double check that this was like, you know, normal because it was so bad on this one. But I think the ports are also really interesting here because on the good side, I love the fact that you get a USB 4 port here. I think that's great. You can go run a whole bunch of really cool things off of that. And you can also run a higher end display, like an 8K 60 display off of that. So this is actually like the most useful feature of this entire thing other than maybe the processor. But on the flip side, the HDMI ports are, are not great. Two 4K 60s, I mean, sure, I guess, you know, if you just have like extra monitors, you could have those, but I mean, so many displays these days can do 120 if, at 4K, even TVs can do that now. So, I mean, 
I, I don't know, I'm just frankly, I, I kind of wish that these were much higher speed ports. And with that USB 4 plus the two HDMI ports, that's still only three display outputs. So if you do have a digital signage or you just want to run a whole bunch of monitors, I think the B-Link is a much better option for you. Now, pricing on this unit, because we have 32 gigs of memory and we also have the half terabyte drive, the when we got it, it was about $730, but it was like with like a $130 coupon, the pricing on these things is just absolutely crazy. If you were to go look on the Minis Forum site right now, I have it up and it's $749 on there. This is like a mid $700 range part, I guess. But I will just say that the pricing on these really changes over time quite a bit. To me though, the bare bones of this at $519 frankly feels like a pretty good deal just based on what we've been buying memory for and also just some of the SSD options. Like a lot of the systems that we build, we actually use pretty low power SSDs just to kind of keep them cool in these mini PCs. And I would probably trade the performance for keeping the system a little bit cooler. And so I think you get to do that trade off if you have the bare bones. But on the flip side, Windows 11 Pro was pre-installed, which makes this a little bit easier if you have a pre-configured system. Hey guys, I know this was a lot, but I hope you like this review of the Minis Forum UM690. This is a cool little box and we have a whole bunch of these that are gonna be, we're gonna be reviewing. We're also gonna pick up some of the other series like Project Tiny Mini Micro. We have nodes that have already been tested and stuff. So we're gonna have videos on those and also other just kind of like firewall boxes and all that kind of stuff. So if you do like these videos, well, why don't you give this video a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.